Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G A, and today we're going to talk about differential equations and slope fields. Alright, so first we're going to start by talking about differential equations. So a differential equation is simply an equation with a derivative, derivative in it. A derivative in it. So an example of a differential equation could look something like this, y prime plus 2y equals 0. So any equation with a derivative in it, we can call it a differential equation. So you can have different orders of differential equations. Um, the order of the differential equation is whatever the highest derivative is, um, the highest derivative um, within the equation. Um, so you can have, for example, a first order equation. And a first order equation is when your highest derivative is just the first derivative. So maybe, I don't know, something like this could be a first order derivative. Second order derivative is one that has a second derivative. So maybe it looks like uh, 3y prime plus 2y double prime equals xy. So whatever the highest derivative is dictates the order of the derivative. Um, so you can find solutions to a differential equation, um, and that's essentially where you're going to be solving for y. So there's two types of solutions you can find. Um, you can find a general solution, and that's where your solution has a c. So that constant of integration, I mean, it's really just a general antiderivative. And then a particular solution is um, you, have, you have information um, about an initial value, which allows you to solve for C, um, so it's no longer a general solution. We would then call it a particular solution. But again, for this, you do need some extra information to help you find that C value. Um, and then a function is a solution to a differential equation if you substitute it for y or y prime and it creates a true statement. So we're also going to be verifying that something is a solution to a differential equation in addition to solving differential equations. All right, so let's try one together. So here we're first going to find the general solution to this differential equation and then we're going to find the particular solution if y of 0 equals 3. So again, we're, we're just trying to say what y is equal to if y prime equals 2x. Um, so we know that the way you undo a derivative is essentially taking the integral. So we're really just finding um, the, um, the general antiderivative of this equation. So we know that the antiderivative of 2x is just x squared, and then we have plus c. So this is our... Um, general solution, and again, this is something we've done before, just now we're, we, you know, we're calling it solving a differential equation. And then we're going to use now this piece of information, y of 0 equals 3, to help us um, solve for c. So we're going to substitute 3 with 0, and then we have 0 squared plus c, so we can see that c is equal to 3. So our particular solution is x squared plus 3. Let's try another one together. Um, so for this one, we're actually going to show that y equals c e to the negative 2x is a general solution to this differential equation, y prime plus 2y equals 0. And then once we've done that, we're going to find the particular solution um, if when x equals 0, y is equal to 5. So first, we're going to verify. So you'll see that we have y prime plus 2y equals 0. So we can substitute y with c to the c times e to the negative 2x, but we need something to substitute for y prime. So we're going to start by actually finding y prime. So we're just going to take that first derivative, and we get negative 2c e to the negative 2x. So it's just using our chain rule. Um, so now we have the two things that we're going to substitute into our differential equation. So for y prime, again, we'll substitute negative 2c e to the negative 2x and then plus 2 times y, which is just this, c times e to the negative 2x. And um, if this is a solution, a general solution, then when we simplify this, we should get a true statement. So it should equal 0 in this case. Um, and you can see that we have negative 2 plus 2 of the same term. So this we get 0 equals 0. So we have just verified that it is, in fact, 
um, a solution. So now that we know it's a solution, it says that find, it asks us to find the particular solution if when x equals 0, y equals 5. So we can go in and substitute that. Um, so c e to the negative 2 times 0. Uh, so 5 equals c times 1. So c equals 5. So our particular solution would be y equals 5 times e to the negative 2x. All right, let's try another one together. So here we're going to determine if this is a solution to the second order differential equation y double prime plus 2y prime equals 2e to the x. So first, we do need to find y prime and y double prime in order for us to substitute it in. So y prime here is going to be negative 4 thirds e to the negative 2x plus 2 thirds e to the x. And then we know y double prime, we'll just do another derivative. So 8 thirds e to the negative 2x uh, plus 2 thirds e to the x. We're just using chain rule. And now we're going to substitute both of these into our differential equation. So for y double prime, 8 thirds e to the negative 2x plus 2 thirds e to the x plus 2 times y prime, which is all of this, negative 4 thirds e to the negative 2x plus 2 thirds e to the x equals 2e to the x. So now it's just a matter of um, simplifying. Um, so here we're going to have the positive 8 thirds and then we have negative 8 thirds, so this will cancel out. And then we have 2 thirds e to the x plus 4 thirds e to the x equals 2 e to the x. And this gives us 6 thirds, which is 2 e to the x. So we have created a valid statement. So this shows that um, this is a solution to our differential equation. All right, I have one for you to try on your own. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so you need to find your first derivative. So you can substitute y prime and y to verify that this is a solution, which it is. And then you could use this piece of information to help you um, solve for c. And that gives us our particular solution right here. All right, so now we're going to talk about slope fields. Um, so slope fields is a way for us to actually graph a differential equation without us actually having to solve for it like we did previously. Um, and it kind of gives us a good visualization of what our um, differential equation looks like. Um, so when we're doing this, um, we're essentially going to plug in different x values and sometimes y values, depending on if your um, differential equation is explicit or implicit. And then that gives us the slope of our line at that individual point. And then we're just going to kind of draw in little dash marks that have approximately that slope to kind of help us visualize. Um, so you can see here we have an explicit differential equation, so it's just in terms of x. So we only need to plug in x values to figure out what the slope is, which is y prime, at that point. So if I plug in these different x values, here we get negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So now we're going to draw in our little dashes. So whenever x is negative 4, um, so in this entire line x equals negative 4, um, at any point, our slope is going to be negative 8. So I'm just going to do like a little tick mark that has a slope of approximately negative 8, which is really steep. I mean, it almost looks vertical when you're doing just a little tiny tick. So this is at all times when x is negative 4. Now for negative 3, our slope is negative 6. So again, it'll still look really slope, maybe or really steep, maybe just like a little bit less steep. And again, you're just kind of estimating here. And then when x is negative 2, our slope is negative 4. Still pretty steep looking. When x is negative 1, our slope is negative 2. Starting to flatten out a little bit. And then when x is 0, our slope is 0. So it looks like this. Uh, 
Um, and now we can do uh, when x is 1, our slope is positive 2. So it looks like something like this. And then it's just going to keep getting um, steeper and steeper as we go. So then we have slope of 4. And a slope of 6. And then a slope of 8. So really, really steep. Um, so then with this, you can kind of see that our, at, um, what our equation would look like. This is what y would look like if you kind of followed along any of these values. So here you could actually pick any value. Like let's say we wanted to know what our line would look like if when x is 0, y is 2. Well, you kind of would plug in that point, you would take that coordinate, and you're just going to kind of follow along the slope lines there. And you could see that it would do something like this. So, and you're kind of just following along the slopes. So you can see when I do this, we do get that parabola. And we know that if we solved for this um, differential equation, it is y equals x squared, of course, plus c. Um, so the slope fields actually allow us to account for all of the possible c values. So we could say, oh, well, I don't know, what if c is negative 2? So we have x squared minus 2. And it would look something like this. You pick that point, and then you kind of just go travel along next to your slope fields to help guide you as you graph. So it looks something kind of like this. And you can see that no matter where I start, we do get that upward-facing parabola. So again, a slope field is just a way to give us an actual graphical representation of a differential equation. Um, and it does account for all of the possible c values that um, our general antiderivative would give us. All right, so let's uh, look at another one together. So here we have an implicit differential equation because our first derivative is in terms of x and y. So we actually need to plug in both x and y values um, to help us find the slopes at the individual points. So in the last example, for any given y value, it had the same slope, but here it depends on both the x and the y coordinate. Um, so you can see here that I kind of um, went from negative 2 to positive 2 for my x values, and I did that for y equals 0, y equals 1, and y equals negative 1. So that will give us kind of a good idea of what this graph um, looks like, at least right around the origin. So here we're again going to plug in the x and the y. So if I do negative 2 plus 0, and we get negative 2. So you're just taking the sum of x and y for this derivative. And I'm going to change the scale of my um, axis, so I'm going to just call this 1 and this 1. Um, okay, so then we kind of go through and we sketch in these different um, slopes. So when x is negative 2, so we're going to do all when y equals 0 first. So here's when x is negative 2, which is over here. Um, when x is negative 2, our slope is negative 2. So it looks something kind of like this. Um, I'm sticking again with all along y equals 0. So when x is negative 1, our slope is negative 1. So it would be right here. And when x is 0, our slope is 0. And then positive 1 and positive 2. So even steeper. All right, now we can do all the times when y is 1. So when x is negative 2, um, our slope is negative 1. something like that. When x is negative 1, our slope is 0. Uh, when x is 0, our slope is 1, like this. And um, when x is 1, our slope is 2. And when x is 2, our slope is 3, so like that. And then um, for our values when y is equal to negative 1, so along this line from negative 2 to 2, when x is negative 2, our slope is negative 3. Oops. And for this next one, sorry, this was supposed to be negative 1. Um, so this should have said negative 2. So we'll fix that. Sorry about that. So when x is negative 1, our slope is negative 2. And then our slope is negative 1. And then our slope is 0. And then our slope is 1. 
Um, so you can kind of get a general idea of what our slope uh, field looks like here. Of course, if we wanted a more accurate slope, maybe we would plug in some more points in between. So here, um, here's like an image uh, from a graphing application um, with a few more um, points, just so you can see a little bit more accuracy. Um, but you can see that ours does match that. But um, again, the more points you add um, in the smaller intervals, the more accurate your slope field is. Um, so if we wanted to sketch a graph where y of 0 equals 1, you would actually, so you'd put, put a point at um, 0, 1 right here and you're just going to try to follow your slope so you can see that it would kind of head in this direction and then it would kind of head around in this direction it would start turning around like this and if we did this with our other graph here we have again some more accuracy so you kind of follow along like this and it would follow maybe like this so you're not necessarily going through the exact coordinates you're just kind of following along wherever your slope um, kind of directs you. Then if we had uh, the graph for y of 0 equals negative 1, it would be down here um, like this. So if we kind of follow that along, then it ends up looking like this actually. Um, so depending on where you are, you know, your equation is going to look different, your graph is going to look different. And again, for this one, if I was doing it on our original graph, it would kind of look like this. And you could see that with more accuracy, we actually have this um, straight line right here. And again, um, this allows us to adjust for really any C value, any constant of integration. So we could do it lower or higher, and again, just follow along um, your dashes. All right, so now um, we're going to work more with kind of sketching out those um, graphs for the following conditions. Um, so here we have a slope field, and first we want to know what would our graph look like if y of 0 is 0. So again, you kind of plot your point at 0, 0, and then you're going to follow along your slope. So it's not going to be exactly, you know, through each one, but it will kind of start heading down in this direction kind of like this. And then you can see going to the left, if you just hit each new slope it will go something like this um, and then if y of 0 were negative 2 so you start right here and again follow along your slopes and maybe it shoots up but then it starts flattening out and you could see eventually it kind of follows along that same shape and then for y of 1 equals 3 so that's when x equals 1 y equals 3 so you could put a point there, and then you just follow along your slope field. So this one will kind of shoot up along this way. This one will start to kind of travel along like this. Um, so you can see for this particular um, equation, it looks like um, y, or whatever, if we solve for y, that it would have some type of slant asymptote right, right along here. So you can see that regardless of which condition, uh, initial condition I'm using, it does seem to all be traveling along this linear equation as x approaches um, negative infinity. All right, so now uh, we're going to try to match two slope fields with two differential equations. Um, so to do this, we can kind of look at each um, differential equation and um, make some generalizations about it. Um, so if we have the dy dx equals x plus y, uh, let's talk about what we know about this. So let's say um, if we can say if y is constant, so if we just pick a y value um, and stick along that horizontal line, we know that, well, as x gets really large as x approaches positive infinity your overall dy dx your slope is also going to get larger um, because again where this is increasing and this is staying constant and then we know that as x gets smaller um, our slope or dy dx would also get um, smaller or more negative um, so we could assume that or we could kind of say okay what if x is constant so we're looking along maybe a vertical line if x is constant we can make the generalization 
zoom out a little bit, um, that as y gets larger, so as y approaches positive infinity, you have a constant number and then you're subtracting a larger number, so our slope is going to decrease because we're subtracting that number. So dy dx will approach negative infinity, meaning our slope is negative. And as y gets smaller, then we're subtracting a negative number, so our slope will increase. So it'll become increasingly steep. So let's see if um, either of these function or slope fields kind of match that. So again, let's look along a horizontal line. Um, along a horizontal line, this says um, as x approaches infinity, um, our slope gets bigger. And as x approaches negative infinity, our slope gets smaller. So that would work. Um, but for this one, it said if we look along a constant vertical line, as y gets bigger, our slope gets smaller. And as y gets smaller, our slope is getting bigger. And that is just not happening. Um, so we can uh, check this other one here. So again, along a horizontal line here, as x approaches positive infinity, our, our graph is getting, the lines are getting steeper and moving to the left. Um, our lines are getting steeper in the negative direction or the slope is becoming more negative, so that works. And then along um, a vertical line like this, um, it says as y is getting bigger, so as I move up, you can see that my slope is in fact getting more negative. And then as I move down, my slope is getting um, more positive. And that's the same here. As I move up, it's getting more negative. And you can see as I move down, it's getting more positive. So I would say that um, this equation, differential equation, with, would go with this slope field. But just to um, generalize what's going on with the other differential equation, so this, since it's a quotient of x and y, we can look at each quadrant and we can determine whether our slope should be positive or negative. So we know for this one, um, in quadrant one, x and y are both positive, so our slope should be um, positive. And in quadrant two over here, Well, our x value is negative, but our y value is positive, so our um, slope should be negative. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, so that means that our slope should end up being positive. And in quadrant 4, um, x is positive, but y is negative, so our slope would be um, negative. So if we kind of check that for this, you can look here in quadrant one. Um, sometimes my slope um, is negative, sometimes the slope is positive. So just that right off the bat would tell you that this slope field does not work for this differential equation. So if we check this one, here all of the slopes are positive. Um, in quadrant two, all of the slopes are negative. In quadrant three, all of them are positive. And in quadrant four, all are negative. And it fits the same pattern. So we can definitely say that this differential equation would go with this slope field. So you can kind of look at the differential equations you have and try to make some generalizations. Again, it depends on the format of your differential equation. And worst case scenario, you could always actually pick x and y values and plug them in and see if it looks like the slope is right and check a couple different coordinates in different quadrants. All right, um, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.